Hello everyone, welcome back to Punkrite. My name is Smee. If you've been watching the channel, then you know that I've just put out a novel, Scarboys, but I've been busy, you know, I've been working, I still write, and I'm nearing the completion of a second novel. Uh, it's called The Banknotes, and I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised if you've liked Scarboys. It's not the same type of genre, because I've been focusing very much on multiple characters and how those characters can interact to move the story, specifically with dialogue. Stick around in this video. I'm going to talk a little bit about dialogue, but not necessarily how to write the dialogue, but more how that dialogue looks on the page and how the text itself interacts to create a great sense of flow for your story. Don't go anywhere. Today I want to explore three specific strategies that you can use. I'm going to show you three samples of my own writing that I've been working on, but I also want to show you a piece from a more well-known author, uh, just to show that this is not something that you should take lightly. And if you implement it well, you're going to be able to write good prose along with dialogue to move your story. The first example I call the interspersing moment. One of the tricks of dialogue is that you want to be able to listen and hear the characters, but you don't want to lose the moment or the situation that you're in. Using a combination of dialogue and narration is very effective for keeping me in the moment. Let's take a look. The first type of dialogue strategy I call the narrative interjection. And the the reason that you're going to use something like this is that it's going to give you kind of a back and forth between the characters, but it also gives you a role for the narration to be intermittent so that you do not lose sense of the moment that you're trying to create. So if you look here, you're going to see a dialogue line here. You're going to see a chunk of dialogue here. But there are some subtle moments in there where I'm just saying what's going on. It gives me a visual. It gives me a thought. Uh, G shook his head. Verbally, he knew nothing. So now I'm in the mind of that character, and I can go back and forth with dialogue and narration. Here's another dialogue tag. Here's the narration. Here's another dialogue tag. And this one I go right into another narration. And all of this is going to give me a fuller sense of what uh, what's going on in the story. The tags along characters helps me keep track of who's speaking, but sometimes you have a very clear situation where you have either a multiplicity of characters or just two characters who I can easily identify, and I want to work on the pacing. I just want the thing to move along, and it's not absolutely necessary that I know which individual sentence or phrase is being spoken by, by each character. This is what I call the quickie, without tags. Let's take a look at how that works. The second strategy is called uh what I call quick pacing. And you would use this when either you have a very clear idea of the two characters who are speaking, or you have maybe a group of characters who are having this conversation. And if you put in taglines of those characters, then you're just going to lose a sense of the flow of the writing. So if you look here, uh, I start with some narrative. Of course, the wife sat up, and then she says something right here. And she makes another comment, but then I just want to move things along. So you look here, this is a dialogue, 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 all the way down. And this chunk right here is just good for pacing. I'm snapping my fingers because it moves along. I don't need to specify because what I want is the content of the scene, and that is the most important thing. Try that one out. Lastly, I want to look at what I call the uh, character monologue or, or the individual character soliloquy. It's, it's a way of exposing a lot of information which can be very valuable in terms of learning about character and also gaining information about the story. These are usually larger chunks of dialogue where the single character is saying a lot. It's he or she is speaking a lot and giving me some sort of uh, robust uh, amount of information that I can deal with in the story. Let's take a look. Lastly, there is what I call the character soliloquy or, or some sort of monologue that the character is going to break into. And this whole chunk, this is from the piece that I'm writing now, this is mostly just one character speaking. This is the police chief. Uh, he speaks here. There are always ways, and he goes on, and I, I have a small interruption by the, another character, but he keeps going, and all of this is a very important piece of dialogue that I, I want to give the reader some impression of uh, who this person is, what the police chief is thinking, what his motives are, and he is just basically saying that. 
it's a form of narration, but this narration is coming directly from the character's mouth, and that makes it very effective. What you're looking at here is uh, an excerpt from Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. And I just wanted to show you a sample of how he works in dialogue with his narrative. Now, this is a very peculiar book. It's got a, um, a lot of narration that takes you very deeply. But when he breaks into conversation, look what he does. So this whole part here is narration. And then he takes me into the situation right here. And he goes back and forth. And the first thing we see here is your tagline with the character. And then he talks about some narration, he goes into narration, Strux hitting palm with his finger for either emphasis or ordinary counting. That just gives me a sense of the situation. And then he goes back into the narration. If I continue on, he does this for a while here. For the next page, he has a group of characters. This is the same scene, and there are various characters. There's Troll Shears, there's Stice. All of these are having a conversation back and forth. I apologize for the blurriness, but I just took a photograph of this. But look what he does. Here is quick dialogue, quick dialogue. There is a tagline here, but then he just loses the taglines. There's quick dialogue, quick dialogue, no tagline, dialogue, no tagline, dialogue, no tagline, dialogue, dialogue, etc. And every now and then he'll throw it in just to remind me if something is, is important that is uh, said by a character, he's going to let us, let us know that. But you'll see this is largely without the taglines. That was great today. I hope you gleaned a little bit of information from this channel. And if you liked what you saw and you liked the content, please uh, subscribe and like. And if you haven't picked up a copy of Scarboys, it's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. If you have any kind of dialogue that you want to have with me, go ahead and put it in the section below in the video and check out other things on the site. Till then, you know what to do. You just keep writing. Punk right.